In the reading last week for the Sunday of the paralytic, and I know that Deacon Mark mentioned this in the sermon last week, Jesus asks the paralytic a question, do you want to be made well? Do you really want it? Are you ready for what it takes to be healed? And in today's Gospel reading, for the Sunday of the Samaritan woman, we see this getting unpacked a little bit, what, what it takes to be healed, what it means to be healed by Christ. And this all centers around what happens when the woman, after having this encounter, this conversation with Jesus, when she goes back to her town and says, come see a man that told me everything about myself, tell me everything that I did. So St. John Chrysostom writes about this, and he writes about how the reading ended. So he says, he quotes the scripture, it says, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed because of the word that she testified, he told me all that I ever did. So then St. John Chrysostom goes on to say, They concluded that the woman would never of her own accord have come to admire one who had reproved her offenses unless he were indeed some great and wonderful person. Which is to say that when it says he told me everything I did, it wasn't just the good things. That this was not just words of affirmation and encouragement, but he also confronted her with the dark side, with her mistakes, with her regrets, and with the things that caused her shame. Notice he says to her, go and talk to your, go and tell your husband, and she says very honestly, I don't have a husband. And there's no Jesus going, well, that's okay. It is simply an acknowledgement of what is going on in her life. So when Jesus asks each and every one of us, do you want to be made well? Do you want the healing that I have to offer you? Part of that healing is coming to terms with the shadows in our lives. Coming to terms with the regrets, with those moments that we look back at and say, if I could live my life over again, I would never, you fill in the, your own blank, or if I could do that again, I really should have, and you can fill in your own blanks, because we all have them. See, part of the healing that Jesus offers us is to be honest about our lives in a searching and fearless way. Because in Christ, there is no shame. This is one of the things that Jesus defeats at the crucifixion, the power of shame in our life. The Samaritan woman did not have to go back to town and tell everybody, he told me everything about myself. But she did it boldly. Because the healing of Jesus Christ turns even our darkest moments, even those points in our lives that are the times of our deepest regret, into possibilities for redemption. That there is grace and forgiveness even there. So do we want to be made well? Are we ready to open our hearts, our consciences, our lives to Him in that way? And of course, we do that in a very concrete way, don't we? It's called confession. This isn't just some abstract thing that we think about. It is a very concrete thing. The, uh, the fathers of the church say that that which is, which is not revealed cannot be healed. And in Alcoholics Anonymous, they say something similar. We are as sick as our secrets. But in Christ, these secrets no longer have to, have to tyrannize us. They no longer have to oppress us. Because on the cross, all those things are taken away. 
And there is forgiveness and grace, always. So when we can break through the shame barrier, when we can break through that barrier, we find the glory of God, the love of God, the forgiveness of God. And we find the beauty of His kingdom, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen.